Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be doing another video that's related to Science Olympiad event code busters. And I'm not sure if this would also apply to people not doing code busters, but that's fine. Basically, I'm going to be showing how to solve a Pollock cipher step by step. So you're probably going to have a question that looks something like this over here where you have the cipher and um, you will have at least like three to four numbers over here and you'll have like either an X dot or a dash next to the number. So the first step in solving one of these is to make a table. Um, and then there are going to be two rows in your table and there will be nine columns, or sorry, 10 columns. Okay, so I have 10 columns in my table right here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and number these over here from zero to nine. And of the four numbers that I have here with the symbol next to them, you might have three or more than four, but how many ever you have, just write down the either the X dash or dot underneath the number. So under one, I'm gonna put an X. Under three, I'm gonna put a dash. And under seven, I'm gonna put a dot. And lastly, under eight, I'm gonna put another X. So before we get to the actual solving, just some like things that you need to know. One, this is completely based off of Morse code. So you need to have some sort of a Morse code table next to you so that you can like check against it. This is my Morse code table and you can just have your own. Usually in code busters, they'll give you it with like the rest of the frequency charts. And next, um, another, another thing you need to know, when you are solving, basically what you're going to be doing is that each of these numbers will respond to either a dot, dash, or X. And after you fill out all the dots, dashes, and X, you will have an entire quote and the dots and dashes will make up the Morse code letters and each uh, X, X means that it's the difference between each letter, means a new letter, right? So if it's like um, dot X dash, then you know, or then you know that dot is E, then then the because there's an X, that means that a new letter is gonna start, and then dash means that's a T, E T. And then and two X's next to each other means a space. It's like in a sentence, that's where one word would end and a new word would start. The first step is to fill out all these numbers that you already know. So under all the ones, I'm gonna put an X, under all the three, I'm gonna put a dash and so on. So, okay, so I filled out how much ever I already know. Now the next step is to see where all the spaces are, how many ever I know already. So I can see double X's over here, so that's one space, double X's, another space, and double X's over here. And now let me see if I can find out if there's any letters that I already know. Um, okay, there are not. So the next step in the situation would be to check out this entire gap over here. So I know that um, each letter, the maximum, amount of dots and dashes I can have is four. So either a zero or a two is gonna have to be a, um, an X. And now I just need to like test out each one. So if theoretically, if the zero was an X, then that would be uh, um, two dots next to each other, which would make I. And if we were to then assume that, um, two is a dot, then that would be dot, 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 dash, which looking at the Morse code table, that would be a V. So an IV wouldn't make sense. And then testing out that two is a dash, that would be dash, dash, dot, dash, which is, let's see, Q. So an IQ wouldn't make sense either. So zero can't be an X which means that two would have to be the X, which would make 
Um, this right over here, one letter. So dot dash is, I believe, an N, or not an N, an A, I mean. And first, let's fill out that two is a um, X everywhere, and then we can move on. Okay, I filled out two everywhere. So now let's see this, right? So dot dash is going to be A over here. And two X's next to each other means that A is one word, which is true. A can be one word. And then this would be dot dot something. So now let's test out the possibilities. If it's dot dot dot, then it would be S. And if it's dot dot dash, that would make it, um, let's see, that make it U. So right now, I don't think there's any two letter word, uh, two letter word that ends with U. So I think that it would have to be S, meaning that if this is S, then O has to be a dot. So now let's fill that out everywhere. Okay, now that I filled out all the zeros, I can see that I now have four dots next to each other, which forms one letter. And I know that four dots is an H. So that's H. That looked really bad. Okay, and one dot right next to that would make that an E. Okay, so now, okay, so let's move on to finding out what some more numbers are. So we can look at the last section right over here. So it will never uh, end with an X. So I know that five has to be either an um, a dash or a dot. And looking at my Morse code, I don't think there's any letter that goes dot dash dash, which would mean that five has to be a dot. And that would make this last letter over here dot dash dot, which is R. Uh, so now let me fill out five as a dot everywhere. Okay, so that fill out a lot of letters. So I should be able to solve a lot now. So I have three dots over here which means this is an S. And I have two dots over here, making this an I. Sorry about the handwriting, by the way. That's just like, I have bad handwriting, but that's fine. Okay, and then over here, we have dot dash dot dot, which would be dot dash dot dot an L. Um, Right, and we have two dots over here, making this an I. Okay, so I filled out everything, and now we can go back to the top here. So I have four dots next to each other, meaning that I already have um, four next to each other, meaning that I can't have anything before that. So that's an, that means that six has to be an X, which would make four dots next to each other and h and i can fill out six as an x everywhere actually it seems that there are uh, zero sixes anywhere else in the cipher so i guess that didn't really help anything but that's fine okay so now let's see if we can fill out anything else okay so i should be able to figure out what four is now because a cipher never starts with an x so it's either a dot or a dash it's only a single dot or dash, and it's either E or H, or sorry, E or T. And I don't see any, I don't know any four letter word that starts with E, H, and ends with S. Anyway, so I'm going to assume that four is a dash, which would make this letter T, and it would be T, H, blank, S. And I think only this would make sense over here. Um, so then what's I? I is dot dots, and zero over here would have to be. Dot, which we already knew, but I just forgot to fill out. Okay, so now let me just fill out four as a dash everywhere else as. A... Okay, so I filled out all the dots and dashes that I can. So I'm just gonna fill out all the letters. Okay, so now the only number that I don't know is nine. 
And I can just easily figure that out by seeing over here. So dot dash blank dot. So if it's if nine is a dash, then it'll be dot dash dash dot, which is P. And if it was a dot, then we dot dash dot dot, which would be L. And I don't think anyone ends with I L H E R. So I'm gonna assume that this uh, nine is a um, dash, and this would mean that this is P, and this is a C. So the final cipher is this is a Pollock cipher. Three. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I hope you learned how to solve a Pollock cipher. And if you're wondering how to solve a Morbid cipher, it's the exact same thing, except that each number will result in two symbols. So zero could be x dash or dot dash or dash dash. So it's basically really easy and um, it does take a lot of time, but this is how you solve it. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed it, please drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you, bye.